Hey guys, welcome back uh, to my channel. I was lucky enough to get one of the first 2024 uh, bills on the X7. Uh, this uh, color is mineral white metallic and I absolutely love this color. I got black wheels to go along with it. It hides brake dust quite well. Um, there's running boats as an extra and the car looks handsome from every angle. I love how the lights come on as you walk towards a car and um, the lights are quite intricately designed and looks very luxurious. And as you walk away, uh, the car locks and the lights fade away. Let me start with the drive of the car first and then we can discuss the other features towards the end. The seating position is extremely comfortable and I love how thick the steering wheel is. Hey BMW, navigate to Walmart. I have found multiple results for Walmart. One. The voice control system is extremely good and you can control many functions in the car using it. Once the navigation system speaks back to you, you can interrupt it and you don't have to listen to the whole thing. This is a very, very comfortable car to be in. It's a tall, big vehicle, but it handles more like a car. And, you know, uh, going through these twisty turns, uh, the car doesn't float too much, it doesn't sway too much, and it really, really handles well. Obviously, it's not a sports car, but it handles well for a car of its size. If you turn into the sport mode, the handling gets even better and uh, it is noticeably more um, responsive with a tauter suspension than the comfort setting. This is a 3 liter inline 6 engine producing around 380 horsepower and close to 400 pound-feet of torque and the initial acceleration is very impressive. It almost feels like a 450 horsepower car. And BMW has been known to, uh, you know, underreport their horsepower numbers. But then where this car really excels is in its comfort setting, you know, where it's very, very, very comfortable. This car has the Driving Assistance Professional Package, which includes the Active Driving Assistant Professional, Highway Assistant, and Traffic Jam Assistant. If you press the mode button on the steering wheel, the assisted driving uh, comes on. So on smaller roads like these, um, once you have the assistant driving on, uh, you can let your hands off the steering wheel. Now, um, on the heads-up display and on the instrument cluster, you can see uh, what the car sees. And as long as the steering wheel is green, that, mean, that means you can keep your hands off. You know, if it does not detect a lane marking or if it's, uh, or if you have your hands off too long, then uh, the steering wheel will flash yellow and will make you want to put your hands back on. And you just have to touch the steering wheel uh, to uh, have the light turn back to green. If you have a car in front of you and if you look down at the instrument cluster, you can see a green box over the car in front which means it's tracking it and that is quite impressive. And if a car leaves uh, you know, uh, that lane and another car comes in, it'll switch the tracking to the new car which is quite impressive. And here I don't have my hands on the steering wheel and if it flashes yellow all I have to do is just touch the steering wheel and then sometimes uh, you know, it'll flash red which means you have to take control uh, of the car immediately as you can see right here. If you're in assisted driving mode and you have the navigation on, if you come to a corner like this, the car will automatically apply the brakes and slow your car down enough so you can make a turn without having to hit the brakes. It will then resume your previous speed and this is quite cool. The 2024 uh, edition of the BMW X7 has a new feature called the Highway Assistant Plus. When you're on a divided highway like this, uh, in addition to the uh, driving assist, another option pops up on the instrument cluster and on the heads-up display called the Assist Plus. And um, if you look down in the instrument cluster, you have three options. One is just the radar-based cruise control. The second is the 
uh, assistant uh, driving mode where it follows a car in front of you and the third is the assist plus and if you click on that you have totally hands-free driving up to 85 mi miles per hour on the highway and this is an absolutely great feature so essentially on a long trip you really don't have to touch the brakes or the steering wheel and it works really well and this uh, here is the assisted view, uh, much like a Tesla, where you can see what the car sees. It's seeing the car in front of you on the left lane. And if it's a truck, it'll show the picture of a truck. If it's a trailer, it show, it'll show a picture of a trailer. It's, it's quite cool. And it's very, uh, very accurate. If you want to make a lane change, all you do is hit the uh, indicator button. It'll make an automatic lane change for you. This car is extremely quiet on the freeway and on, on any road and that is so impressive because this is a tall and boxy car and not very aerodynamic. In addition it runs on 21 inch wheels that are run flat tires and in the past run flat tires really made for a bad ride and uh, increased uh, noise but this car is very very quiet. In fact I tested this out using an app on my phone and I'm not sure if this is very accurate, but I was getting about 64 decibels on the highway at 65 miles an hour. Um, and on some quieter roads where the roads were better, I was getting about 58 decibels, which is very impressive. Just for comparison, I took my Audi A8 on the same road. Now the Audi is an extremely quiet car. It is very aerodynamic. It does not run on run flat tires. And it was still consistently about one decibel louder than the BMW on similar roads. One decibel may not sound like much, but remember a decibel is a logarithmic scale. So which means one decibel is about 70-10% louder. For comparison, my Porsche, which I consider to be a fairly comfortable car, is about 69 decibels, which is about um, 5 to 6 decibels louder, which means it's almost 5 times louder than either of these cars. Back on the X7, once you have the Highway Assistant on, if you don't keep your eyes on the road and glance at your phone or look to the right or left persistently, then it will flash a distracted driver warning. And if you still don't pay attention, it will disengage the assistance. Even when driving towards the sun with significant glare, the highway assistant performed flawlessly. The highway assistant does a great job of keeping track of the surrounding traffic. As you can see, it tracks a white car in front on the left lane and it sees it as it crosses over to the right lane. Once in my driveway, an option to automatically park the car pops up on the screen and one press of the button and the car drives very slowly down my tricky driveway and into my garage and this makes um, daily life so much easier because this is a big car and I don't have a whole lot of space in my garage um, and it's quite tricky to get the car into the right spot. So I'm very, very thankful for the feature and I enjoy this every single day. I have made a separate video on how to do this and I will link it here. Another feature that is quite useful is you can geotag the front camera to come on at certain tricky intersections or driveways so you can see uh, cross traffic. Uh, the interior of the car, this color is called uh, Cognac Sensafin and I think it looks really nice. And once you climb in, you're greeted with a beautiful chime. As usual, all of the buttons are of high quality. There are steering wheel controls for easy access. There are a multitude of ambient colors to choose from and they are all very very good and um, at night it's really um, a nice place to be in. All of the uh, controls, the uh, AC vents are high quality and it looks really beautiful. Not a lot of physical buttons in the car but those that are there are high quality. There's a wireless phone charger and two cup holders which are cooled and heated. These glass controls on the iDrive controller and on the start stop button and on the drive selector are part of the executive package and I think they look really nice. The ride height adjustment can be useful for elderly passengers to get in and out of the car and also if you're going over uh, rough terrain. This button pops open the central armrest and there's a pretty deep 
um, storage space there with the USB-C charge. In addition, when the seat heaters are on, this and the uh, side armrest are both heated. You can use either the iDrive controller or uh, your hands as a touch screen to control this beautiful 14.9 inch display. This is where all the widgets reside and you can rearrange them or add new widgets uh, you know, to your preference. Um, a previous BMWs had a physical set of shortcut buttons. Here, if you flick the iDrive controller up, you have a shortcut screen that uh, drops down like this. And um, you can add sh the commonly used uh, shortcuts here. And I've only added about seven, but I think you can add many more. I'm not quite sure what the limit is. But you know, the commonly used phone numbers, audio source, Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay, things of that nature you can store there. These are all the apps that are installed in the vehicle. Um, and it gets a little getting used to, but you know, once you've played around with it, it becomes quite um, intuitive. If you press and hold one of these apps, then uh, you have the option of adding it to your shortcuts. And you can also bring it up with gesture controls. Now this is a music uh, menu where you have all your audio sources. This is telephone, um, which is self-explanatory. And then here are, is a map. And the maps, you can switch between the BMW maps and Android Auto. Same thing for the voice control. You can use uh, the Hey BMW option or uh, Hey Google to control functions in your car if you have Android Auto. Or Hey Siri for Apple CarPlay. If you click this button on the steering wheel, you can change how your uh, instrument cluster or your heads-up display looks. You can scroll through these many options. Uh, this one shows you the vehicle information. This one gives you the assisted display. Um, you have one for directions. Um, this one here is augmented reality, which I like, which will give you a camera view and then overlaid directions on top. This one is the G meter, if you're so inclined. Um, it'll also show you the map view or your media connections. You can also change the aesthetics of your instrument cluster. Um, and among these, I tend to like the this one here the most. You can also change the look of your heads-up display. Besides adjusting the height up and down, you can have your navigation information. You can have your assisted view. You can see some of the other cars. Um, so a lot of adjustability. Now, I got to mention that these seats are extremely comfortable. Uh, this wood grain trim is called fine line brown wood trim and I think it looks really nice. This button adjusts the second row seats. You can see the memory buttons one and two. That button is a seat massager. This one here if you press on it and once the green light comes on and if you adjust your driver's side controls you can adjust the passenger seats. There's general storage on the doors. The second row seats are extremely spacious and comfortable. I am 5'9", and with me sitting behind myself, I have more than enough knee and leg room in the back seat. BMW has ditched rear entertainment systems, and here instead you have an iPad holder and a USB charger. There are individual seat and climate controls for the rear passengers. There are cup holders and an armrest that stows away quite neatly. We got bench uh, seating mainly for the storage, and it's also very comfortable. But at one point I had wished perhaps we should have gone the captain's chairs, mainly because the kids can then move back and forth between the second and third row seating while the car was in motion. However, in this car, as you can see, you can get the middle part of the seat down and it acts almost like uh, captain's chairs and the kids can uh, step on this and go to the back seat without any issues. So win-win. With all seats up, there's really not a whole lot of storage in the back. As you can see, I, I can fit one medium-sized bag in. But if you get one of the seats down, then the storage space increases dramatically. There is also some surprising storage here where the usual spare tire would be. If you press this button for maximum cargo here, then the third and second row seats fold automatically. People have said that this is a slow process, but honestly, I don't think so, you know. It's very convenient and it just takes a few seconds for all the seats to fold flat and give you a lot of storage. I timed it, it takes about 24 seconds 
for the seats to fall flat. Also, moving the second row to gain access to the third row takes about 13 seconds. These running boards are useful to step up into the third row seat. And with the second row seats, you know, fairly backwards, uh, there's not a whole lot of knee room, but it's still okay, I can still sit there. Here I have moved the second row seating slightly forward, which still gives me a lot of room in the second row. And now I can sit very comfortably in the back seat. Uniquely, the third row has its own climate control and seat heating. There are also chargers and cup holders back here. So as you can tell, I'm very happy with this car. It is one of the most comfortable cars I have been in. It rides extremely well. I test drove several other cars, including the GLS, and I thought the BMW uh, rode better, had more features, and was you know more value for money. Even the base engine has more than adequate power to get you through any situation. The Highway Assistant Plus has been a standout feature for me because it allows effortless driving on the highway and is valuable for long trips. Also, the automatic parking, especially where you can teach at certain maneuvers. And in my case, it's very, very useful to get in and out of my garage on a daily basis. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe and hit the like button. I don't have a lot of time to make uh, videos like this, but your encouragement keeps me going. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.